This is All the Right Marketing, a publishing podcast by Cardinal Rule Press. Now, here's your host, Maria Desmondi. Welcome to All the Right Marketing, where we talk with business owners and industry leaders about marketing their programs and their products. But by now, you know that the products that we talk about here are books. Today's guest is Diana Murray. She writes stories and poems for children. She's the author of the best-selling Unicorn Day series and more. She grew up in New York City. We were just talking about it and still lives nearby with her husband, two kids, and a dancing dog. Welcome, Diana. Thank you so much for having me. Hi. So we need to start by hearing the story about mailing a manuscript submission in with bite marks. Tell us about this. Oh, right. So back around 2008, that was pretty much close to the beginning of my journey into writing. And we lived in the Bronx at the time. My kids were very young then. Uh, So my oldest at the time was about three. And there weren't as many online submissions back then. It was mostly, you know, hard copies that you had to get in the mail. So it was kind of like a pain to get everything together. And I didn't have an agent yet. So I was doing everything myself. And we walked to the corner to mail my submission. It was in a big yellow envelope. And of course I had my daughter helping me. And then I look down when we get to the mailbox and she has it in her mouth. Yep. It has a little white marks on it. So then I had to decide, do I still send it? Do I go redo it? But I decided to still send it. So hopefully nobody was too freaked out by getting that. So it's um, funny because when I yeah, read that, so I immediately I immediately thought it was your dancing dog. Oh. <laughs> no, we didn't have a dog yet at that time. That was after we moved to the suburbs, we got a dog. It was your hungry child. <laughs> she, she's very imaginative, you know, so she can't just simply mail something. She has to pretend she's a dog carrying something. I, I love it. I love it. So the other question I like to ask writers is, um, before you started writing for children, what is it that you liked to do? Were you a stay-at-home mom? Um, what did you study or did you work before that? Well, I was always interested in art. I always, since I was young, I always thought maybe I would be, um, draw cartoons for TV. That's, you know, at the time, that's what they were called, I guess, cartoons. And, um, Then I studied psychology in college with an emphasis on child psychology because I was always interested in children. And then um, rather, I was originally going to go to graduate school, but then I got a job in graphic design and I just decided to continue with that because I had so much fun with it. Um, And then it wasn't until my first daughter was born um, in 2005, once she was about one or two, we started reading tons of books together. And she was has always been such a big reader and I could just see her interest growing as we were reading. It was just such a nice experience. And that's when I first got into it and thought, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. And I did, I left work. I was working as an art director at a fashion company, not doing fashion, but doing graphic design there. And, um, you know, I thought originally I might go back, but then I decided to see if maybe I could make writing for children work. And thankfully, it took several years, but it did eventually work out. So It usually does. Tell us about that first book. So, well, the very first break I got, I guess I would say, was in 2010. Um, I applied for the SCB, or I submitted something for the SCBWI Work in Progress Grant, which at the time was called the Barbara Carlin Grant. Um, and it did have um, even a cash like prize at the time. Um, and I ended up winning and I was just like in complete shock. I couldn't believe that I had won. I was like jumping around the house. I was so excited. And that, I felt like that was a really, it felt like such an encouragement to me to, to keep going and that maybe I could make it work because it is, it's so frustrating when you first start out and it takes so long to hear back from anyone and you always, you get so many form rejections and it can be so frustrating. So that was really nice. And then in 2012, um, I signed with my agent. And that's when everything started coming together. Uh, And so the first book I sold, we submitted a few things at once and they all started kind of bubbling up at the same time. But the very first one I sold was Ned the Knitting Pirate. And I remember I was walking outside with my daughter in her stroller at the time and I started like screaming in the street. It was kind of funny because 
you know, it was in an urban environment. So there were a lot of people around, um, but I, but I did prevent myself from dancing. I did, you know, I, I tried to stay as subdued as possible, but it was very exciting. Now, so many aspiring writers are going to be listening to this, just having this vision in their head of their moment, right? Their moment that they find mm -hmm. out in. Um, and then also we have other people listening to the podcast, other writers who are right there with you with their own experiences and knowing that this journey takes a long time and um, it, really it takes does. perseverance. It definitely does. Mm -hmm. I love the background in graphic design and um, that, you know, your children, I think you said your daughter is a reader and um, so your children are a little bit older now. Are they going into any form of art inspired by mama? Yeah, so my oldest now, the one who held the envelope in her mouth, is now almost 18, and she's actually looking to apply to um, colleges, and she's looking to study art. So yeah, she's always been very artistic, uh, and my youngest daughter is going into eighth grade right now. She's also artsy, but in a different way, like more like fashion and interior design and stuff so like that. So fun. I love to yeah. see what trickles into the family. Yeah. One of the things you and I were talking about um, was you know, what, what would the podcast title be? And one of your answers prompted my next question. Um, but before I get there, I don't want to go too far ahead of myself. Let's, we, we have a little bit of time to make up. So now we're around 2012, you have an agent. Is it the same? Mm -hmm. Have you been working with the same agent for the last 10 years? Well, I worked with that agent for about 10 years, like a really long time. And I still love her. Like she's great. And we have, you know, still very positive and everything yeah. but I did leave that agent around in 2020 I think it was and signed with a new agent so now I'm with somebody else that I also love okay but they're just yeah so fantastic yeah. so you've you've had experiences with a couple agents and since 2012 how many books are in your published series or not series but your published portfolio now so I guess out right now I think are about 20, but there's like more coming. So like maybe all together, like 25 ish. And Amazing. I guess it's a good problem to have that I can't remember exactly. <laughs> that is awesome. So, but is yeah, really it's great. great. We'll make sure um, that in the show notes, people have links to your website, um, your social media. It sounds like maybe Twitter and Instagram is where you're spending some time um, so that they can check out your books. But we've got more to talk about. Are you ready for this? Yes. So you're always working on something. Tell me about that. Very true. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, I just really love writing. I never expected to get into children's writing, but I just enjoy it so much. And I feel like I enjoy it no matter what my emotion is. Like if I'm really upset about something, I love writing. And if I'm really always like, but that's what I love to do work on vacation because I love it. Like there's nothing I really enjoy more. So, and there's so much waiting involved. It's so frustrating. Even after you get it, you're always waiting for something. And I find that the best way to deal with that is to be working on something else, whether it's, you know, another book or even like, if you're already waiting on a few submissions, you could work on, um, you know, shorter poems or short stories to submit to magazines. And I feel like that kind of keeps me going sometimes while I'm waiting for other things. You know, I always like to have something cooking. It's just, it's fun. I like that. I think it's important. And what, I, I'm assuming you've worked with several different publishers. What are some of the different things you've done in partnership with your publishers to connect with your readers when the books come out or to, um, you know, share your stories with readers? What are some of the things that you've done with publishers? Let's see. Um, I like mean, book mostly, signings, maybe um, school visits or, you know, something unique that maybe happened during the pandemic. If you had a book come out in those couple of years. I didn't do too much. I think that was scheduled directly through the publisher um, with my unicorn books, because, you know, those have more marketing behind them, I guess, and stuff that they sell a lot. I, I did do a couple of things. Like I even took a trip down to Georgia and I got to meet um, the illustrator and we did a reading there at a bookstore. It was so much fun. That was my first like big trip, you know, to uh, <laughs> that was part of this job. And, um, you know, I, I don't do that many school visits just because I don't come from a teaching background and it causes me so much anxiety that I feel like I, I tend to avoid it a little bit, but I do, 
readings at bookstores. I do readings on Zoom sometimes. And um, I love doing festivals. I have a bunch coming up in October. I find those are very effective because you meet so many people. And it's also nice to connect with other writers because it can be such a solitary profession. So that's I a find great, that yeah. What festival yeah. are you speaking of? So a couple coming up, there's the Chappaqua Festival. Um, and there's the Rye Book Festival, um, the Warwick Festival, Maplewood, New Jersey. Um, those are all I can think of right now. I'm sure That's I'm amazing. We don't have a ton as far as, um, you know, we're out of Michigan. Um, okay. I know SCBWI does something big in Ann Arbor a couple years, a uh, couple times a year for writers, but we don't have festivals in our community. Oh, yeah. That's okay. four, right? Within, you know, yeah. from your home. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I really enjoy those. And do you have to sign up ahead of time or how does that work? You do. You have to sign up ahead of time. There's usually an application you fill out and you don't always get accepted either. Like I've, I've done the Princeton Book Festival before, which is really huge. I've only been accepted to that one time. Every other time they've rejected. So, and then there's also the Hudson Book Festival, which is awesome, which I've also only been accepted to one time. So I think they do partially. They like to, you know, vary which authors they have come because, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I might, I need to tell you, Diana, that our family. This, this interview is exciting because our family is actually a big fan of yours. I could not, we have two of your books and you can see the bookshelf behind me. Then there's also three children in our home and they have bookshelves in their rooms. I could not find your books and it was driving me crazy. And I was like, <laughs> I was telling the kids, I'm like, I have an interview with her tomorrow. I need to find her books. And they knew exactly what books they were. So I, um, I thank you for the work that you are doing and I mean, clearly you're inspiring um, our next generation of creative individuals, like those in your own home. Um, is there a project that you have coming up uh, that you know you would like to share with our listeners? Maybe something that's being released later on in 2022 or something that's been announced for 2023? Sure. Um, so right now, the book that I just had come out um, in August was Groggle's Monster Halloween, which is a follow-up to, to the first book, which is Groggle's Monster Valentine. And then in October, I have the third in the Unicorn Day book series, um, which is called Unicorn Christmas. Ooh. And I, I have, it hasn't come out yet, but I do have hard copies. In fact, I'll, I'll show you. Here's, here's one. This is the international edition, which I never had one of those before. And I'm still not exactly sure what that is, but I know that it has British spelling. And this one is a soft cover, but it still has glitter, which is very important. Oh, that's exciting. That yeah. is very cool. So there's three. Is that the third one you said in the unicorn? That's the third one. And then the one coming there, we're, I'm already looking at art for the one coming out after that, which is going to be Mermaid Day, which hasn't been announced yet. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. So it's going to branch out into other topics. Um, and then some others coming this year are Someday Maybe with Macmillan. And um, Love Stinks, which is another early reader for Valentine's Day, has a skunk character. <gasps> and That's then fun. finally is um, Firehouse Rainbow, which is my first book with um, Little Golden Books. I was so excited about that because I used to read those as a kid <sighs> and it just felt so surreal to see my name on there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'll have to look for that one. We we've got our own little collection of those little golden books. As oh, well. so cool. That's really special. Well, you are a busy woman. And I think the greatest advice coming out of this interview is to always stay busy, to continue to work on something. Even when, like you said, you tap into those, those negative emotions, just as much as you're tapping into those positive emotions. And it just keeps you moving forward in the work that you're doing. Like, so, yeah, and I think that moving forward is actually a, a very key phrase in this business. Just keep moving forward. You know, when are you, if you get a rejection, keep moving forward. I think that is great advice. Thank you so much, Diana, for your time today. And audience, you know where to find Diana. It's going to need to be in the show notes for more information. We look forward to our next interview that will air every single Tuesday. Until then, think outside of the box. And don't be afraid to reach your audience in new and creative ways. Thanks so much, Diana. If this episode resonated with you, let's take it a step further. 
head over to cardinalrulepress.com and check out our blog. It is filled with resources for anyone who loves books, whether you are a publisher, a librarian, a bookseller, or an author. We help you to figure out ways to get visibility around those books. Thanks for listening to All the Right Marketing with Maria Desmondi. If there is a topic you would like us to explore and cover, please email podcast at cardinalrulepress.com. Head over to our website, cardinalrulepress.com, to sign up for our monthly newsletter where you can learn more tips on getting books visible into the market. Last but not least, follow us on Instagram for a daily dose of all things books. If you enjoyed this episode, rate and review or share with a friend or colleague. Thanks so much.